Hi, everyone. So uh, thank you for coming. Uh, this is joint work with uh, collaborators at the University of Texas at Austin. Okay, so uh, our problem here, we want to perform analytics on large graphs. This can be uh, the, the internet, uh, social networks like Facebook and Twitter, or uh, protein interaction networks and bioinformatics. And uh, we noticed that in these areas, in these applications, uh, the, the triangle count and clustering coefficient are, are useful features. So we want a, a more descriptive representation that, that generalizes these quantities. And uh, with the theme of big data, we also want our approach to be scalable to, uh, to large clusters of machines or, or virtual machines. So uh, now I'll, I'll describe the, the quantity, the, I'll define the quantity of interest here, which is the three profile. Uh, this is computed by iterating over uh, all triples of vertices in a graph. So uh, you may be familiar with counting triangles in a graph. Here, uh, we're looking at all three subgraphs. Uh, this can generalize to any size subgraph, but for this work, we'll consider three subgraphs. So we've got the, uh, the empty graph, a single edge, a wedge, and a triangle. Uh, and this is you know, an anti-click, a click, and everything in between. So uh, more, more precisely, we, uh, the three profile of a graph G is a vector where each entry corresponds to uh, the number of times one of these subgraphs appears in the graph. So uh, this will sum to vertices choose three, which is the, the total number of triples. Now uh, let's step through a few examples to get a feel for this. Uh, if you consider the four click, then uh, take any three vertices. For example, these three, they form a triangle. These three also form a triangle, and so on. So the three profile of this graph is uh, a four on the right and zeros everywhere else. Now, if we consider a five cycle and step through that example, uh, if we look, there are no empty graphs. Any three vertices will have some edges. Uh, the single edge, if we look here on the left, there's an edge between these two, and then this is disconnected. And uh, by symmetry, we can rotate this around and get five such subgraphs. So there's a five here in the second entry. And similarly, with the wedge, we see uh, a wedge formed right here, and we can rotate around to so get five wedges. Uh, finally, there are no triangles. And we check uh, 5 choose 3 is 10, and our vector sums to 10. So, uh, so far, I've defined a the global 3 profile, which uh, takes a graph and then outputs four numbers. But there are also related terms uh, that give four numbers for each vertex. And this gives a, a more refined description of our graph. So the local 3 profile counts uh, the number of times uh, a vertex V participates in subgraphs with two other vertices. So we're restricting to only the subgraphs that include this vertex V. And then we can also, instead of taking the three profile of the entire graph, we can uh, take it of only the, the ego graph of a given vertex. And, uh, and here the ego is, uh, is the induced graph by, uh, by the neighborhood set of a given vertex. And so this is a, a slightly harder problem. Uh, it involves taking four subgraphs. Uh, there are more details in the full paper, but I'll only mention it briefly here in this talk. So uh, you might wonder why we care about this. Uh, there are several reasons. So the global three profile has been used to, uh, it's a, a concise global statistic that gives some uh, notion of local connectivity. So this has been used to uh, classify molecules, compounds, uh, proteins, to see if they have certain properties. You can predict properties based on the structure in there. And uh, as well, you can picture uh, local and eco three profiles as, as feature vectors for each vertex, and then try to classify different vertices. So for example, detecting spam in a social network, or uh, it's known that subgraph frequencies uh, look, are a good way to differentiate social networks from other random graph families. So we can use this to, uh, to develop and test new generative models. So uh, now we can state the problem more concretely. Uh, our goal is to compute or approximate these three profile quantities in a large graph. And by large, I mean uh, millions or billions of edges. And so our proposed approach is to use uh, edge subsampling to approximate this quantity and uh, a distributed graph engine implementation. So uh, our contributions are as follows. We derive a three profile sparsifier. So a sparsifier is an estimator on a sparsified version of the graph. And uh, we have uh, provable guarantees for this sparsifier. And uh, second, we, we design distributed algorithms that calculate the, uh, the local and ego three profiles. So uh, it might be clear that you can compute the, the global four numbers by uh, calculating the local three profile and then performing a, a reduce on all vertices and scaling appropriately. Uh, and then finally, we, we implement these algorithms on several hardware platforms and, uh, and test their performance on real graphs. 
So uh, this problem uh, was defined recently by Nazi Lineal, but uh, the ideas have been around for a long time. People have cared about uh, graph subsampling estimators, uh, motifs, and graph accounting for a while. Uh, this work is, is most directly inspired by a series of papers by Tsurakakis et al. And then uh, other relevant references are Kim and Vu, Shank, and Kowalik. So now I'll discuss the first contribution, the three-profile sparsifier. So uh, our subsampling scheme I is very simple. It's the simplest thing you can do. We, we sample each edge in the graph independently with probability p and, uh, and observe that the subgraphs in the original graph are related to those in the subsample graph by a Markov chain. So this figure describes the, the, the transitions. We look at the original graph and the subgraphs contained uh, and then compare that to the subgraphs in the subsample graph. Uh, the clearest one to see is triangles. So a triangle appears in the subsample graph with probability p cubed if each edge in the original triangle is subsampled with probability p. For a wedge, it's uh, slightly more complicated. A wedge can either start as a wedge in the original graph or as a triangle uh, with two edges sampled and one edge not sampled. So you can continue, fill in the rest of this figure, write out a state transition matrix, and uh, invert it to obtain unbiased estimators. Now, uh, it's easy to see with substitution that the, the means are correct, but then a natural question is, what's the concentration around these means? Uh, what, what's the variance? How much spread is there? So this leads us to our, our main technical result, which is uh, a theorem on three-profile sparsifiers. So uh, I've tried to write this in plain English for now. Uh, the mathematical details are in the paper. And uh, basically, for, for a class of well-behaved graphs, so uh, we'll call them epsilon p balanced graphs for a tolerance epsilon and a sampling probability p, we can bound the, the L infinity norm of our sparsifier error by a term uh, proportional to vertices choose three with high probability. And so uh, to try and define this, uh, what I mean by a well-behaved graph, the intuition here is that we want for, for each subgraph, triangles, wedges, and single edge, we want the, the fraction of that subgraph that depends on a single edge to not be too large. So uh, one example of, uh, of a graph that's not well, well balanced is if uh, all of the wedges depend on a single edge. And that means removing that edge will, uh, will affect the estimators a lot, and this graph is not well balanced for those parameters, and the bound will be worse. So uh, this generalizes a notion uh, that was an existing work for triangles, the number of triangles that exist on a common edge. We can state similar things for, for all subgraphs. So the, the proof outline is straightforward. Uh, we write each estimator as a, as a function of 0, 1 indicator variables for each edge being subsampled. And this is a function of the graph structure as well as the sampling probability p. Now for, for triangles, we can uh, directly apply concentration results for uh, multivariate polynomials. But uh, the problem with other estimators, they're negative signs. And so uh, the technical contribution is we, we decompose those estimators into uh, terms of totally positive polynomials, uh, apply the concentration, and then combine the, uh, the inequality. So now I'll, I'll switch gears and discuss our distributed algorithms. Uh, due to time, I'll only discuss one, which is a uh, three prof for calculating the, the local three profile at every vertex. So, uh, so both algorithms can be written as, as vertex programs in the gather, apply, scatter framework. It's common to uh, distributed graph engines, including GraphLab. So uh, I'll, I'll describe this algorithm. It, it will look similar to the triangle counting algorithm if you're familiar to that. So uh, the first step is to gather this uh, neighborhood vector at each vertex. So each vertex looks at its neighbors, uh, pulls the, the ID of each neighbor, and then stores this as a gamma V at the vertex. Then each edge uh, scatters, following, the following uh, quantity gets scattered to each edge, just this, the size of this intersection set. So if you look, this is the number of vertices that are neighbors of both V and A, and this is exactly the number of triangles. Uh, this line should be familiar, and we compute similar quantities, storing a few extra variables here. So uh, this equation computes the number of uh, subgraphs that look like this. So we have neighbors of V which are not neighbors of A. And so uh, the surprising thing is that we can compute all subgraphs like this in this framework distributedly in parallel. And then finally, uh, the, in the, the second and final round of this gather, apply, scatter uh, framework, this data lives at the edges, and we, we gather to the final vertex to get the final count at every vertex. This is to compute the number of triangles, and we do things similarly for the other subgraphs. So for, uh, for ego three profiles, we, uh, it requires another round of gather, apply, scatter, 
to, uh, to calculate the number of four clicks. And uh, basically four clicks is, is all we need here combined with this information to calculate the ego three profiles. Uh, we don't need to compute ego subgraphs explicitly, we just calculate these four subgraphs instead and, and that's everything we need. So now I'll show uh, some of our experiments we ran. Uh, our basic setup, we, we implemented these algorithms in uh, GraphLab PowerGraph and uh, two, two hardware platforms we used here were a, a multi-core server with a, a large amount, 256 gigabytes of memory as well as uh, 72 cores and uh, an Amazon Web Services cluster with uh, up to 20 nodes, uh, powerful Amazon EC2 machines. Our data sets are standard data sets, including uh, the Twitter graph with 1.2 billion edges. So uh, first, let's show uh, the accuracy of our three profile sparsifier. Uh, if we look, this is the, the pay level domain web graph, and uh, each bar represents a subgraph estimator. You see, as we decrease the sampling probability to the point this, this series of bars is throwing away 99% of the edges, uh, you can see that the error is still fairly good. Uh, these bars represent standard deviation, and this is uh, only about 1% standard deviation. Uh, another thing to note is that in this case, the uh, triangle estimate breaks down first. And then uh, we can also compare, uh, our goal in this experiment is to compare the, the running time of our local three profile algorithm to, uh, to GraphLab's default triangle counting algorithm. So this is a, a standard benchmark used in, in graph engines. And uh, it's also worthwhile to look, uh, because we're computing more than triangles, we wanna see how much extra time it requires to compute these, these extra numbers at, each, at every vertex. So as you see, for, uh, for two graphs here, the uh, Twitter and PLD graph, the running times are, are very comparable. Uh, it doesn't require that much uh, extra resources here to run uh, our three prop algorithm versus counting triangles. So, uh, and we can, in addition, we can uh, subsample to get this running time down even lower. Uh, if we subsample to get a fairly accurate estimate here, uh, it would uh, correspond to running the, the Twitter graph in, uh, in about a minute. So uh, finally, I'll show a set of results on, uh, on the Amazon EC2 cluster, where uh, we compare, in this case, our ego power algorithm to a, to a naive serial implementation. So as I mentioned before, uh, ego power uh, basically computes all ego three profiles in parallel uh, without computing ego subgraphs explicitly. We just count the number of four clicks. So uh, by contrast, this uh, ego seer algorithm for each vertex serially computes the ego and then computes the, uh, the three profile on that ego graph. So uh, we, we notice, we observe that uh, as expected, the, uh, the serial algorithm scales very poorly. Uh, we, we run this on uh, 100 randomly selected egos and then increase that to 1,000 and 10,000 egos. And so uh, this is computing four numbers for each of these egos. Uh, and we see that for the, the parallel algorithm, uh, it scales extremely well. We can compute 10,000 egos in, in about 12 seconds. And then we can uh, blow up the, the right hand uh, portion of this graph. The, all of these results are for 12 nodes if we uh, scale, increase the cluster size to, to 20 nodes, we get additional speed ups. So this means that our, our ego power algorithm uh, scales well with increasing cluster size on the live journal graph. Okay, so finally, wrapping up, uh, we've shown a provably accurate edge subsampling scheme that uh, produces fast accurate estimates of this global three profile. Uh, we've shown that local three profile counting consumes roughly the same number of resources as, uh, as local triangle counting. And uh, we've also shown that uh, our distributed algorithms scale well with uh, increasing, increasing problem size as well as increasing cluster size. So uh, there, there are hopes for future work here to, uh, to use larger subgraphs like uh, the four profile as well as finding uh, applications. So uh, either applications where uh, graphlets or triangle counting is useful or new applications. And uh, our code is available on GitHub as well, so you can, uh, you can look at what we've done. And uh, that's it. I'm uh, happy to answer any questions. Any questions? Um, 
I have multiple questions, but I'll start with one. Um, when you showed us the uh, accuracy, is this the uh, average of the accuracy over multiple runs? Or uh, yes. So, but I mean, it's not very surprising that there is no error because I mean, this is an unbiased estimator, so obviously it's going to converge to the to the real value. Right. Well, I mean, it's going to converge to the mean, but there's also not much spread, which is what I wanted to show there. It's, it's right. fairly accurate. Okay. Um, the other question I have, when you use the Klimov inequality, it's not very clear when the, what is the connection exactly between the sampling probability and the error you, you obtain, because there is also a component that depends on the actual number of triangles that, or whatever, that there is in the graph, which is a quantity that you don't know. Right, yeah. Um, so the issue here is that how do you even choose the sampling probability and how, I mean, what you're really interested in is, oh, I want this error, what sh how much should I sample? And the Kimvu gives you no way, basically, of choosing that. Any other options? Or why, yeah. why using it? Why, why choosing this? Why, why sampling according to a given probability rather than something more intuitive like, I have this space, I should fill this space. Right, so, so if you sample according proportional to the degree or something like that, that requires one pass just to get estimates of the degree, something like that if you use a more complex sampling scheme. And, uh, and I agree that the, the Kimbu concentration isn't, it probably is not the best tool. It's mainly uh, for like asymptotic scaling, but if you wanted to pick a probability and say, you know, what accuracy, what probability do I, do I need, you might need other, other tools. And so we have, uh, we have future work, uh, an ongoing work that, that utilizes that. Any other questions? So I had a question about the data sets that you used. Okay. Um, did you compute how quote unquote balanced they were? Um, no, we didn't actually uh, plug in values uh, and like compare theoretical to experimental mm -hmm. games, but we just observed that uh, things were fairly concentrated in the estimators. Yeah. Great. Thank you again. Thanks. Thanks.